Cyberpunk 2077 is on its way, we'll see it next April, but in the meantime, it's always fun to learn more. Hi folks, it's Falcon and today on Game Ranks, 10 Cyberpunk 2077 facts you probably didn't know. Coming in at number 10, hey, you know how most games that are primarily released to the North American market, the place that they'll probably make the most money in, are written in English? Well, Cyberpunk 2077 wasn't. It was actually written in Polish first. In a recent interview from Quest Director from CD Projekt Red, Mateusz Tomaskiewicz said, Every time we work on a game, we prepare the Polish version first. All our writers are Polish. Then we have a team responsible for adaption of dialogue into English. We start from Polish and move to that. Which is astounding. As we all know, localization of games can be super weird, but with Cyberpunk 2077, pretty much everything we've seen of it seems natural. It seems like it was written in English by people from the United States. By all accounts, it really just kind of seems entirely natural and, although yes, it's definitely in a heightened version of the world, really has a lot of the American feel to it. Apparently, this isn't the first game they've done like this either. Now, they didn't have to get an American feel in The Witcher 3, but that's how they did that too. Moving on to number 9. Internally, the Cyberpunk 2077 team had a goal to meet when they released their first trailer. Now, this was back in 2013, so the hype train hadn't reached fever pitch for this game. I imagine when this game comes out, it's gonna be wild, because we've been talking about it for a long time, and it's never really lost momentum. But they were concerned about that. It was obviously early days for this project, and they set a first week goal for traffic for the video of a million views and they got over 10 times that much. They got over 10 million views that first week. And as the meme goes, expectation versus reality, reality is always worse. However, here, totally different. Reality was the better one. It's in no small part due to the fact that what they've been putting out on this game is art in of itself. And even though it's technically advertised in the game, so much of it is beautiful, interesting, colorful, and kind of stands alone as a thing itself. It's easy to see why they built that momentum and have maintained it over so many years. Coming in at number 8, Cyberpunk 2077 was announced in 2013, but while there have been members of the team that have been working on it since 2012, CD Projekt Red as a whole studio wasn't really working on it as a majority-sized operation within the company. And even then, they still had blood and wine to make. Not the literal blood and wine, I'm talking about the DLC expansion for The Witcher 3, which is phenomenal. But it was actually after 2014's Hearts of Stone expansion that they shifted a large amount of their staff to Cyberpunk 2077. And the actual full studio itself, all of CD Projekt Red, probably wasn't working on the game until sometime around 2016. Now keeping in mind that the majority of the studio will have been working on the game for six years when it finally comes out in 2020, and the entirety of the studio for four, this game has been in the works since 2012, and overall, I just love that it seems like the thing that matters as far as the development is just making a great game. I mean, we're talking about a massive single player game that's only going to be that, a single player game. If you ask some executives nowadays if they would be willing to spend eight years on a single player game just to make sure it's super detailed and wildly good, they'd probably say no, uh-uh, never. Unless you've come up with a nice little monetization scheme, we haven't. And moving on to number seven, Mike Pondsmith, the creator of the original cyberpunk pen and paper RPG that Cyberpunk 2077 is designed to be part of in a certain way, worked with CD Projekt Red from the start, but who is he? Mike Pondsmith was born to a military family and because of this was actually raised in a war game friendly setting. The unofficial tactical training he received here influenced his later work, obviously. He was originally in graphic design doing box arts for video games in the 1980s, but when he redesigned the rules for a game called Traveler, which was a science fiction pen and paper RPG that had a setting that he liked a little bit more than the medieval fantasy pen and paper RPGs at the time, he felt like he could do it professionally. So he built Mechton, 
which was a pen and paper RPG he designed inspired by Mobile Suit Gundam, the actual original manga, and founded the company R. Talsorian Games in 1985. The 1990s wasn't as successful as the 1980s for him though, and he ended up taking a job at Microsoft to make Xbox games. Now, not only was he involved in design, he also actually voiced some characters, including in Mech Commander 2, which released in 2001, he played Steel. Now, I don't know if you remember that game, but I remember that game. I loved Mech Commander back in the day, and it was cool to find out that he actually was part of that. Mike Pondsmith's involvement in the 2077 video game focuses on the actual game world itself, as well as some of the mechanics of the game. He'll be playing a character in the game, and he's also working on a new version of the pen and paper RPG to, quote, evolve the genre. Number six, at this point, CD Projekt Red is one of Poland's biggest companies with a market cap of $1.6 billion. And that was back in 2017. I don't know what it is right now. I assume it's higher. They've gotten so much press in the last couple of years just off of a game that's not even out. I have to imagine their games that are out have sold better. But they got their start actually pirating games. I mean, they were in a country that didn't have copyright law at the time, so it wasn't quite the same thing. But as soon as the country moved over to a market economy and linked up with the West at the time of big Eastern European changes, so to speak, they did start doing it legally. In fact, they struck deals with various publishers, including Bioware, that allowed them to fully localize games in Polish. Now, this was something that, because of the price games had to sell in Poland, which was much lower on account, the cost of living is so much lower, if they made a big multilingual version of a game, it would probably get sent all over Europe, and people would play it in languages other than Polish. However, having it localized to Poland and selling it in Poland was a great business model on account it basically region locked the game, kept it exclusive, and it could be sold at that much cheaper price. It was also because of how well they did that they were able to license the Neverwinter Nights engine and do the original Witcher game. Moving on to number five, being this is such a big project for such a big company, the growth that they've experienced has been quite large. In fact, the team working on Cyberpunk 2077 is 60% larger than Witcher 3. In fact, they have about 350 people working on the game. There have been rumors saying the development has been messy in a way that Anthem was. However, I would go ahead and say that it seems quite a bit like it's not a game like Anthem, and the messiness is probably due to them making large creative decisions that require large changes. That's speculation, of course, but it's a big team, and it would be not impossible to expect given the project is so big and there's so much writing on it. Coming in at number four, CD Projekt Red originally thought that Cyberpunk 2077 could never get Keanu Reeves. Probably the biggest surprise of E3 this year was of course him gracing the stage. Basically, the business branch said, let's try to get Keanu. But the artistic end of things was saying, no, there's no way we can get Keanu Reeves. But they ended up contacting Keanu Reeves' office and he was interested pretty much right away. They sent him some stuff, some people went and met him, and he was pretty stoked about the project. Got involved, they ironed out the contract real quick. I mean, if you think about it, it fits in pretty well with other roles he's done. For instance, the Matrix series or Johnny Mnemonic. Hell, Johnny Mnemonic even has the same first name. And apparently he's the second most important character of the game, so getting Keanu Reeves for it is a pretty big boon. Apparently he did 50 days of recording for it, and that's that. Keanu Reeves is in the game. Moving on to number three, the music in this game is going to be a wide range of styles. When asked about it, the Cyberpunk Twitter account said, we're marrying cyber with punk and these are the two main pillars of our music direction. Cyber centers around the sonic texture of the score and punk is all about the attitude of the music. Night City shimmers with colors and so is the music, but we're not limiting ourselves to one specific genre, which I think is great sounding. They're also collaborating with the band called Refused, if you've heard of them, and have the composer from Limitless and the recent Judge Dredd remake simply called Dredd, which has a pretty damn awesome score, perfect for cyberpunk, might I add, and I really just can't wait to see what they do with the music in this game. 
Coming in at number two, according to CD Projekt Red, Cyberpunk does not take place in an extension of our world, but rather a futuristic imagining of it, specifically what Mike Pondsmith thought the future might be if it went dystopian. In this respect, it contains a lot of 1980s ideas like wires for the internet, for instance, and everybody having to jack in at physical access points, which I think is very interesting. Mike Pondsmith has also said, everything is political. All things have politics infused in them in some way, even if unconsciously. He specifically said a big part of what cyberpunk talks about is the disparities of power and how technology readdresses that. He also said, cyberpunk is a warning, not, hey, this is going to be great. He also noted, do we really want corporations structuring how our lives work? Which is, I mean, slightly ironic given that CD Projekt Red is a corporation. However, at least they're tackling the question. And finally, coming in at number one, Cyberpunk 2077 has been in development for a long time. We've talked about that a little bit already, but we never really went into any detail as to why, other than it's a lot of work. And of course it is, but there's more to it than that. You see, CD Projekt Red is an independent developer. They're also self-publishers. They don't like calling themselves publishers because they're publishing their own work. At least that's what Marcy Nowinski, co-founder and co-CEO of CD Projekt Red, has said. They have the ability to change direction if they really want to. If something isn't up to what they think they want to put out, they aren't married to it because they're not making it for a publisher. They're making it for themselves. So while that doesn't take money completely out of the equation, there is a degree of artistic integrity that an independent developer slash self-publisher has that a studio either under a publisher or that works with a publisher doesn't. And they've done that several times during the course of this game. They tried things that maybe they weren't happy with or didn't work or just went in a direction they weren't really prepared to follow. They've spent six to seven months at a time completely changing something about the game because they thought it would be better if they did it a different way. Now, they have the money to do this. They're a huge company that started as literally just an independent company and stayed that way the whole time and somehow stayed only interested in developing video games instead of buying some MOBAs and quote-unquote doing game development in maintaining them. No, CD Projekt Red actually seems to just care about making games. And if that is what you care about and you have tons of money, that's a very good thing because you can make decisions that make the game better and they don't destroy you. And that's obviously the optimistic viewpoint, the one that assumes the game that comes out is good. I'm willing to assume that viewpoint with CD Projekt Red due to past games. But if it turns out to be bad, then we'll probably point to this as indecisive and probably the wrong direction for them to take with this project. But with them, they haven't really dropped the ball. Their games have always gotten better, and to my knowledge, this has always been how they've made them. It's just Cyberpunk is such a big project, it's taken nearly a decade to do it. And let me just say, I really cannot wait to get my hands on this game. And as a quick bonus, Mike Pondsmith, the creator of the Cyberpunk franchise, had turned down about half a dozen offers from game developers before he said, yes, I will let CD Projekt Red do it. Mike Pondsmith actually went ahead and said that he had met with some fairly large names as far as the AAA game industry goes, and he just didn't feel comfortable with any of them. Apparently, several of them indicated that their game would simply be a reskin of another one of their games made to look cyberpunk, but using those same mechanics. And for someone who actually does seem to care pretty deeply about his franchise, Mike Pondsmith, I get why he didn't go with that. And when he met with CD Projekt Red, not only were they enthusiastic about the franchise, they had actual experience with the source material. And that was a big deal to Mike Pondsmith, and again, I get why. Speaking of the source material, or hey, the game itself, what are you thinking about Cyberpunk? How excited for you are it? Is it one you can't stand the fact that you have to wait for it? It's like that for me, but leave a comment, let us know what you think, and if you like this video, please click like. If you're not subscribed, now's a great time to do so. We upload brand new videos every day of the week, and the best way to see them first is, of course, a subscription. So click subscribe, and don't forget to click the notification bell. As always, we thank you very much for watching this video. I'm Falcon. You can follow me on Twitter, at FalconTheHero, and we'll see you next time, right here on GameRanks.